Hi there, it's Phoebe from Quilted Pig. I'm here today to talk to you about a few of the tools that you need to get started quilting. First, we're gonna start out with, you need a cutting mat. This one is 18 by 24, and it is the size that I wouldn't recommend going any smaller than this for um, your big cutting, cutting strips and things like that. The one underneath it is, I believe, 24 by 36, and so it's a nice, good size that lets you cut either direction. The next thing you need is a ruler to cut on that cutting mat. I personally like one like this, a nice long one. It's long enough that when the fabric's folded in half, you can cut a strip all the way across the fabric. This one's six and a half inches wide, which is something that if you're new to cutting, you need to be sure that you're paying attention to whether you're on the half inch side or the not half inch size. This one is a half of that one, so it's 12 and a half inches long. It's really nice to take to workshops or if you're working with pre-cuts, things like that. Another ruler that eventually you'll need, excuse my slide number around, is a square up ruler. You use this ruler to lay it down on the block and trim off any weird things that might be sticking out. Make sure your ruler, or excuse me, your block is square. That way when you sew your blocks together, they'll all go together evenly. Now additionally, there are tons and tons of odd shaped rulers for doing specialty blocks like a Dresden plate or a fan and triangles, hexagons, all kinds of things. But we can talk about those later. The next thing you need to consider is a rotary cutter. Now I have a few different models here for you to see and I thought I'd show you kind of the differences among them. This one is the original classic looking rotary cutter and this particular one doesn't actually have a blade in it. But the way it works is you use your thumb or your finger to retract this black thing, which exposes the blade, and then you can cut. This, I believe, is a 20 millimeter. It might be 25. Um, mostly what I use, though, is a 45 millimeter. Now, this one is a nice cutter. It's meant to be ergonomic. Um, it doesn't work great for me because I'm left-handed, but I'm going to show you how it works. It has a push button right here. You push it forward and that pushes the blade forward. So now it's exposed and you can cut with it. When you want to retract the blade, you push this button and it clicks back into space. And this is why it didn't particularly work well for me because I'm left-handed. I would find that my finger would inadvertently hit the button and close the blade while I was cutting. But the one that I use the most is one like this and it also has a button mechanism, but you use the button to either lock it where you can't open it at all or you can push the button and then you can open it like you want but you can lock it open by pushing the same button on this but the button's far enough forward that no matter which side you're on you're not going to accidentally push it but either way you should get whatever rotary cutter feels most comfortable in your hands um, after rotary cutters you're going to need scissors i like a big pair pair of dressmaking shears um, for if I need to cut something big. Uh, obviously they're big scissors. <laughs> These are nice if you're cutting out detailed shapes like appliques or um, hexagons for English paper piecing. And then I keep a pair like this right next to my sewing machine for nipping threads. Again, find scissors that are going to feel comfortable in your hand scissors that you will feel comfortable using and just get those and stick with them. After that, you're going to need some pins. Now I like, um, I believe they're called dressmaker fine pins and I like them because they are extra long and they're thin. And the reason I like that is because when you're doing precision piecing and you're pinning through a, um, a seam to, to match up points or something like that, it won't distort it as you you know, as you move it along, it'll stay together. These do not have any head on them, which if you're having, if you have carpet in your sewing space, I don't necessarily recommend because I stepped on one one time and it was not good. What I started using after that happened was these plastic flower headed pins. Now they have a plastic thing on them so you cannot iron, but again, the um, actual pin portion is about an inch and a quarter long, um, which is great. You can get far back and they're also very thin so they're not going to distort the seams and the points as you're doing it. Next thing you need to consider is starch and an iron. 
This is the iron that I use right now. Um, I also have a travel iron. Use, again, what's most comfortable for you. If you're going to be doing a lot, try to look for one that's lightweight. Um, they can get pretty heavy. I personally like to pre-wash my fabrics. And when I'm done pre-washing them, when I pull them out of the dryer, you know, shake them out and everything, and then I like to iron and starch them. Now, if the fabric feels like it's going to give me trouble, or if I know my um, pattern has a lot of bias seams or bias cuts otherwise, I really like to use this heavy starch. This can be found at the grocery store. Um, this one comes from your local quilt shop, and it's a little lighter. It has a nice smell to it. Um, it's real easy to use, but it works great for if you're piecing a block. So you're folding the seam over and give it a a zhuzh with the starch and then iron it down. It stays flat and it stays crisp and it stays nice. So once you've done that, you need to look at threads. You can choose from among cotton, all purpose, which I believe is a polyester covered cotton or a straight up polyester. It just depends on um, what you're looking for in your quilt. I like to match the colors to my quilt because I feel like that Keeps you from distracting, you don't see the stitches in it. Um, the important part is that it be a relatively thin thread so that when you press it back, that the thread isn't taking up bulk in your seam allowance and causing that to be bulky. Now something to consider is these are all on spools. This is on a cone. And this actually isn't for piecing, it's for um, embroidery and long arm quilting but I wanted to show you an example. If your thread pin, which is where the thread sits on your machine, is up and down like this, which it is on most older machines, you really want a spool. Um, that allows the thread comes off this way, the spool spins and nothing gets twisted. If your spool pin goes at an angle, or if you're using a cone, and there are brands that make cones that are smaller like this, and it's on the side, you'll want a um, thread stand and that enables the thread to come smoothly off of this. But again, if your machine uses the cones, if it's made to use cones, you can use the smaller cones directly on the spool pin. And last but not least, something that we don't want to think about that we need is a seam ripper. This is an older style seam ripper. The Pointy end just comes out of the cap and then you put it on backwards and get to picking your stitches out. Then I have a couple of newer styles here. This one you can put the lid back on, put it away. I have some newer styles here. This one is a little bigger. Um, it also has a rubber tip so you can use it like an eraser. Once you've got little bits of thread, it kind of scrapes them up, gets them off the fabric. So there's that one. And then this one is a little more ergonomic. So if you're gonna be ripping out a lot of seams, this might be a good choice for you. Um, it's got a bigger handle. It's easier for someone with bigger hands to use. So hopefully this gives you an idea of the tools that you need to get started quilting. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, I hope that you'll hit like. I hope that you'll subscribe and consider watching some of my other videos on basic quilting. Thank you and have a good day. Bye-bye.